G'day guys, how's it going? Right, now, I first must say, I'm sorry, but there is no definitive solution when it comes to sleeping mats, sleeping bags, and pillows. There is just, there's a, a large array of products and styles of how to do it, but the main thing is that we're all very different different whether we're male, female, different whether, they're, whether, whether we are 16, 18 year old, or 50, 60, 70, or in between. Everything has a, cha a difference, and then just the normal differences that we have. Some people are side sleepers, some people are back sleepers, some people are naturally warm, more warm, keep, keep that warmth going whereas some people are cold sleepers, if you know what I mean. But what I can do is through my experience, personal experience that I, that I do, and what I've also seen. Now, before we go too far, I want to, I know there's going to be hammock people out there. Now, first of all, hammock people are a minority. That tells you something. I don't want the hammock people getting on there. Well, you don't need all this because if you use a hammock, I'm not even want to get into that thing. This is just about camping in a tent and what sleeping solutions you have. Forget about the hammock. We'll talk about that in a later one. I've got lots of views on that stuff. <laughs> right, let's get into it. Rightio, here we go. The first thing we're gonna start with is, and in my eyes, this is the most important piece of equipment when going camping, and that is the sleeping mat. So this is an old school self-inflating mattress. I'm not going as old school and hiking way with the, you know, the, the bloody foam, hardcore foam shit, right? I've used this, it was great. This is a Helinox stretcher. Bloody fantastic, love it. And then this, I've done a video, this was the game changer. This is a blow up mattress. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set all these up so that we can see them. So I've set them all up, we've got the stretcher, we've got the self-inflating mattress. Now say a self-inflating mattress has a foam core in there. That's, so what you do is you open the valve and eventually, what, you, what I used to do is I'd set up camp, undo the valve, throw it in there, and then by the time I was ready to go to sleep, it had pretty much um, filled up. As it's gotten a little bit older, or if it's been packed away for a long time, you just have to blow into it to do it. Blowing into them is not a good thing because of the whole moisture bullshit, but I've done it and I don't, uh, whatever. Um, and then I've got this one here, the Cedar Summit bloody, uh, the one there. That is just air in there. There is, this ha does have an insulative bloody thing in it. Um, yeah, right, but I wanna start with this. Big, heavy jacket, great, wear it all the time, working around here, brilliant. This one here, $25 from a cheap shop, it's a puffer, puffer jacket. Lightweight, you know, simple. This thing keeps me way warmer than what this big thing does. And the reason for it is it's a puffer jacket. So there's lots of air pockets in there. So air pockets is our friend uh, for keeping us warm. So that's just something to remember. Right, so what I'm gonna do is just leave that one there for the moment. So this one here, you can, I don't even, this is very, very old. It's worked, I liked it, it was great, but things have changed. Things are getting better. The problem with one of these is, as you can see, it's thin. Um, I'm not sure what the R value is. The R value would be high when it's like that, but as soon as you lay on it, it squashes it. And now you've got no air bubbles in between. And what happens is, it's your shoulder and your hip. I'm a, so a side sleeper. There and, and up there, you end up getting really cold spots. So I would say no to one of these, unless you could get a really thick one. 
but then it's going to be too bulky. So there you go. That's, that's the dealio with that. This, which is the Halonox bloody, uh, <coughs> Halonox cot. Fantastic. This is just crazy. It's light. Um, now, our value on this would be zero because there's nothing, it's just the material, but it does hold you off the ground. There's ways to fix certain things. The more you can feel the air, like put your jackets and bits and pieces underneath there, I've done that before, to stop you getting cold. I did make up, sorry, Nay made up a fleece liner, has little straps and basically that gets strapped over, so you then got a fleece there. That helped also. Why I don't use this, it is very lightweight. Um, it doesn't pack down as small, but it is compact, but it does have hard pieces in it. Which then, so we'll get that. So I'm saying if you like stretches, Get one of these, you can't go, you can't go wrong. Now a lot of my, my camping stuff has been, because we've been doing hard tracks and places where I need to keep the bike light um, as possible so that I can bloody do these tracks. So that's where, uh, well actually this wasn't, this is the second type of this one. The first one that I got was the Cedar Summit Comfort Plus, and that's the orange one, and I'll most probably bang it up there for you to see. That is fantastic. Now that's different to this one. It's it's actually thinner, but there is uh, two chambers. There's a chamber on the front and a chamber on the back. So you blow up one side, and then you blow up the other one. Now that's great if you get a, a puncher. These don't, look, I don't know what they, armadillo skin they make these things out of. Um, I never have to really worry about it. It's not like the old days of the, you know, those plastic bloody blow up air beds that'll always, you know, end up getting a leak or whatever. Um, these seem to hold up really well. So I think that the, the dual chamber and that Comfort Plus was an insulated one and it holds the cold better than this. And the reason for that is because there's two chambers, an air chamber there and an air chamber there. This one's getting cold and it's holding it from this one. Your body temperature is warming this one. It's that kind of thing. Whereas on this one, it's just one solid one. So you will feel cold more through this one than the other one. But this one is so much more comfortable. The other one is comfortable, don't get me wrong. I'd happily go back to using one of those. The Comfort Plus is noisy. This has noise to it but not as much as the Comfort Plus but for me it was the comfortability of this one that's what that's what sold me on this as soon as I got it and slept on it I went that's it this is the one so that's my choice for that now unfortunately they're expensive bloody choices but I think I don't know you've got a thousand dollars or you've got five hundred dollars to spend on getting your shit done I say spend your money on getting a really good one of these. Now one, I've tried the Climate, I'll put the that one up, the Climate, uh, Climate, K, whatever it is. Those ribs that you see there, I tried it and I just, I, I slept in the lounge room on it to test it out and it was not comfortable at all. It was just shit. So you've got to be careful, not all these are the same. If you can, the thicker, the better. And funnily enough, even though this one is bigger than the, the Comfort Plus one, this one's actually lighter than the Comfort Plus. Crazy. Um, so I don't have a cheap solution for a really comfortable one. So that's why I say spend your money on this. Second money is on a sleeping bag before everything else, tent, stoves, all that kind of stuff. That's where you want to spend your money. Now, uh, and like I was saying, everybody's different. Now I've watched lots of different reviews where they have 10 different mattresses, including, including this one. And there was one recently I watched and they had, I don't know, 12 different bloody things. 
And this was the first one to go that they didn't like. And I went, holy, what? The reason for it, the sole reason for it was, because he did actually say it was very comfortable. But, and I know, obviously it was in America, they were sleeping on snow, and that's what killed it for him, was uh, the, see the R rating on this, I think is 3.6 or something like that. Um, the Comfort Plus one, I think is four point something. So nowadays, you have the beauty of that, that a lot of them are having the R rating listed on there, so that helps. But I'm not sleeping on snow, so I much prefer to go this comfort stuff. But just remember when you're looking, everybody's, that's what I keep saying, everybody's got different styles. It depends on how you're using it, where you're using it, what type of purse, you know what I mean. Now guys, I quickly just wanna um, elaborate a little bit more on that. I, I reckon that this having the stretcher and then this on top of the stretcher, that would be the ultimate sleeping thing. And that's actually something that I could carry on the motorbike if I wanted to. Um, but I know it'll be a burning question on a lot of people is, you know, really what's, what, what do I think is the best between this one and that one? Comfortability wise, they're very, very close, but they're comfortable for different reasons. This one here, you can you know, feel like, oh, am I on it type of thing, you know, scoot your legs over because you might have been, when you rolled it, you might have coming off or whatever. Whereas on that one, you're on it, you're in it, and you just don't feel, you don't get like that, that you're coming to the edge because it holds, it's got those raised edges there. But because that's such a taut, this thing hugs your body better than what that one does. Now, Coldness wise, I think they're fairly equal once you do what you, you know, doing the bits and pieces. This isn't noisy um, compared to this one is a little bit more noisier. I don't think there's any noise with that one to be honest. Um, yeah, so I just, yeah, I wanted to put that out there because I know people, so, but overall I would still choose this. Um, and I don't know whether I said so this one is, uh, takes a little bit more to set up because there's the poles and you've got to feed them through those aisles and they don't always line up, so a bit of mucking around. And I have to do that outside of the tent. This has to touch the ground outside the tent when I'm putting it together. Whereas this one, it's based, so what I, would, what I do is, uh, this is rolled up, I fling it into the tent, so this bottom part is in the tent. I hook up my little puffer bag and I puff it up and then it just goes straight in the tent. So this doesn't touch the outside and exactly the same when I want to do it down, I release that, spin it around, <clears throat> that's in the tent, I'm outside the tent standing up and then I roll it all the way, it never touches the ground outside. So ease of putting this up and down this is much easier than that but don't get me wrong that's not difficult to do at all but I'm all about every little second bits and pieces every little thing that you don't have to do all adds up to the whole experience of doing it because remember when you're out camping it's not like being at home where you sit in a big comfortable chair, you're cooking or you're standing up. Everything's designed to be easy like this. And when you're camping, everything's down there. Up, down, up, down. There's some things I'll, I do before I go, if I've got a camping and I haven't done it for a little while, there's a few little exercises that I do that makes um, life a little bit better when camping, which I'll do on a future video. But, oh yeah, right, okay. Um, let's just touch on the pillows next. Rightio guys, pillows, there's not much I can help you out with pillows. Look, I've got two of these pillows, I don't make them anymore, but they're just like a regular pillow, except they're a small, compact pillow. And I run two, and even that's not, I pile stuff under, the uh, under thing to get my height 
but I like that this is like a normal pillow. There are shitloads of blow up pillows and all that, all those types. I've tried the blow up ones. I just don't like them. I, just, it just doesn't work for me. Um, they can give you the height, but it's just not the same. And you know, a lot of times I'll put my hand under my pillow. It blow up ones just don't work for me. You've got to figure out that at least pillows are cheap. <laughs> Go and buy a blow up pillow. Try it out. See what you think. You might. It might work. Um, what you can do is a cheap way <coughs> um, is get your regular pillow, cut it in half, put it in a bloody, what do you call it, a pillow case, cut it, get the missus to bloody sew it up or don't, just put it in and then wrap it around and sleep on that. That's another way of doing it. Right, so we are now at the sleeping bags. I've got four sleeping bags here. Two of these sleeping bags are the polyester, whatever. The other two here are the down ones. So this one here is my winter one. This is my summer one. Now, I got this one by mistake. Well, because I was an idiot, um, I got this one and then quickly realized, holy shit, no, that's not gonna work. I need a bigger one. So if I was to do the down again, I would not buy that one. I would just buy this one, and this one would be my winter, summer, the whole kit and caboodle. And I'll explain that why. This, the one in here is the one that I've used for many, many years. It looks pretty much, it packs down to pretty much that, maybe a smidge smaller, uh, but that's the size. These ones here, obviously that one's got to pack down even smaller and that one there, um, not as that one, but it's probably half the size of that and at half the weight. I'm guesstimating here. Um, so the beauty of the down ones is that, and this is what I got stuffed, I, I was an idiot. I was thinking the down ones were warmer than the polyester ones. I don't know why I thought that. I just thought it and I went out <clears throat> and I bought this one. It doesn't work like that. If this is a minus 10 and this is a minus 10, they work exactly the same. There's no bloody difference. They will work in minus 10. If it's minus 20, you'll freeze in that one and you'll freeze in that one. <laughs> so, that's, so that's what you've got to do. Um, and the other thing is that we've got to look at the comfort rating. So they, I think now it's all, they seem to be sticking with the comfort. They used to have extreme comfort and some other bloody one, but it's comfort. Comfort rating is what you've got to look at. If you look at the extreme one and go, oh wow, minus 20, um, extreme, it's, it's, well that means that at minus 20, you are sitting there shivering cold, but you won't die. So in minus 20, you won't die, but you will be extremely uncomfortable. The comfort rating is means that you'll be, if it's minus 20 for the comfort, it'll be minus 20 and you'll be sitting in there and you'll be just nice. You won't be, you won't, you shouldn't be cold, you shouldn't shiver, you'll be just nice. And that's, and this is the thing, remember everybody's different. <clears throat> I'm finding as I'm getting older, I'm starting to get cooler when I'm sleeping, that's just probably a thing of getting older. When I was younger, I didn't have to worry too much about the cold because I was, I don't know, more hot-blooded or whatever. Right, so there you go, guys. That is, um, <clears throat> what is this one? It is a, yeah, so this is a minus 10. So this um, sleeping bag here will be the same as this one here, except this one's a minus 11, I think, in the comfort rating. So that's, this is another Cedar Summit pr um, product. Um, yeah, so this one's got minus 18 listed on there. But that where it says it there, that is actually the extreme. Because if we look, I think, in here somewhere. Yes, yeah, so they list it. And this is the one they promote. Lower limit is what they're calling it, minus 18. The comfort rating is minus 11. 
and the extreme, oh, so they've got extreme lower limit and comfort. Minus 39 centigrade is your extreme. So that's you shivering your ass off. You're nearly dying, but you're not gonna die. Minus 18 will be you're shivering, but you're not too bad, it's, you, can, you, know, you can handle it. And the minus 18 is you're there, and that's nice. Cool, so that's comfort rating is what you gotta look at. So another, this is a, I think they call it the treetop, it's a Cedar Summit, and it says minus three. And if I go on the inside where it has the proper short lookers on, so extreme, minus 19, lower limit, minus three, but comfort is two degrees Celsius. So if it's two degrees while you're out camping overnight, you should be comfortable in this. Well, I'm telling you, I'm not comfortable in this um, at two degrees Celsius. So I always tell people, minus 10 Nothing less than minus 10. It's, yeah, it's your choice, but for me, I find I need a minus 10, and then I'm comfortable in the places where I camp and the temperatures that I'm camping in. Um, if it gets to zero degrees overnight, I will be comfortable in this minus 10. If it gets to minus 10, I'm not gonna be comfortable in this, but I don't, I don't camp generally in minus 10 degrees. Um, so the down ones are more expensive than the polyester ones. This is heavier, bulkier than this one. So you're paying more for the weight and all that kind of stuff. Now, a thing to note, with the down ones, if they get wet, they're absolutely bloody useless. If this gets wet, you've got a better chance of staying warm in this. It does, the, the wetting of this stuff, it's because it's the down feathers. The down feathers just go to nothing. So you lose all that air void in there. So that's the, really the difference between this and this. Weight, compactability, and then there is that wet um, thing with them. Uh, so when looking at these, what are the other considerations apart from that? I would say, Make sure you've got a drawstring so that you can draw that in. Having, I don't know if you can see that, that's a, like a draft stopper. And what happens is when you lay in it, that little draft stopper, it just fills the void of where, where your head is and stops the cold skipping past. It stops it um, getting through. That's a really good thing to have. So the other considerations are, I'm not, I, I'm fine in a mummy bag. So these go down fairly, um, fairly thin. I don't, some people, they need to have room. The less room you have, the warmer you're gonna be. Same with a tent. The smaller the tent, the warmer you're gonna be. If you've got one of those big bloody tents where you can park your motorbike under them and all that, they look fantastic. They take most probably, oh, shut up, Mark. Um, but there are a big tent inside, so you've got a lot of volume, your body heat has got too much to, to heat up. So, and that's the same premise with this. So, if you do, if you can't get a minus 10 or whatever, and you've got to get one of the ones that are a bit less than that for affordability, there are things that you can do. And I'll start with the one thing, this is the, Cedar Summit Thermalite Reactor. So that's a sleeping bag liner. You're supposed to put that in there and it'll give you extra degrees. Uh, for me, I call bullshit. I, I, I tried it, tested it. It didn't, didn't seem to do bugger all for me. I can't remember how much it was, but I'm pretty sure it would have been expensive. A $15 travel rug from Kmart. That works better than that. And I was surprised, someone, me and Nay were on holidays, oh not holidays, we were out camping. It was Dave, Dave from bloody Ballarat. And what we were, the first night we were there, we put the blankets over us. We were in the sleeping bags and we put them over. <clears throat> we were talking to Dave and he goes, no, 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 what are you doing? 
He said, put the blanket in the sleeping bag. You don't put it over you, you don't put it under you or around you, you just stuff it in there. So it goes all the way down. And he said, that's it. And he said, trust me, just do it tonight and then tell me what you reckon in the morning. Well, bugger me, did that not bloody work? And the reason why it worked is because it's filling up the void, all the, the air. There's less air in there for your body to heat up so you stay warmer in there. So simply by, when you know it's gonna be a cold night or whatever when you're going camping, obviously in summer you don't have to worry about it. Um, <clears throat> but just, that's what I do. I just, I add that to my, in the, into my bag and I whack it in there and it keeps me warm. Another thing you can do, wear a bloody beanie on your head. That works too. And this is all about getting a cheaper bag that's not gonna be as warm and what you can do to up the, up the warming of them um, and getting away with it cheap. Until you start, you know, as you go along, you can up, up, up your ante and all that kind of shit, but hot hands, toe warmers, you don't, you can stick them to your bloody, if you've got your socks on, stick them to the bottoms of your socks. It'll keep your bloody tootsies nice and warm. That what, what I've done is I just rip them out and I just throw them in there. Throw a couple in there. Hey, presto. Brilliant, because they last like 10 hours. So that's very, very cheap. Couple of bucks from the supermarket or the, or the chemist. Brilliant. Right, so there you go, guys. Um, Again, buy the minus 10, I'm saying buy a minus 10 bloody uh, Celsius sleeping bag and that will do you up until minus zero. Exceptions to the rule. If you can't afford a, and it doesn't matter whether it's down or whether it's a polyester, as we know, that's exactly the same, it's just the bulk and all that kind of stuff. If, you, if you've got to get a lesser one because you can't spend enough, you've, you've bought one of those fancy sleeping mats because Mark said, put all your money there. Now I don't have enough for the tent and everything else. I've got to, I've got to lessen it on here. Do all these things in that bag until you go, fuck, I like this bloody camping. Month down the track, you go, oh, I can afford to get a better sleeping bag. That's the way to do it, if you ask me. All right, I'll just quickly say, so obviously if you take that for sleeping, or well, when you're around camp, you know, of, of the night, you're keeping your head warm. So it's dual purpose. These are dual purpose. They take up bugger all. You just stick them in your bloody tank bag. They're great even when you're riding along or where it's turned bloody shit. Take them out, stick them down your jacket, keeps you warm. So dual purpose and the blanket is dual purpose as well, because what I would what I do with my Halinox uh, chair, it has the mesh on the back. I grab this and I lay that over the chair. So it covers the bottom and the thing. I sit in that and that keeps my back way warmer when it's cold at night. So dual purpose as well. Mark, brilliant. <laughs> Well, there you go, guys. Hopefully that has uh, helped demystify bits and pieces or, I don't know, you got something out of it. Like I said right from the start, there's no definitive exact way of doing it. There's so many things in it and everybody's a little bit different. So, yeah, hopefully that's to help you figure out for yourself what it, what's best going to suit you. Brilliant. Right, the next video we're going to do is what I think the best tent or style of tent, not exactly the brand, but what you need in a tent for motorcycle camping. We'll even throw in the whole bloody, you know, the, what do you call it, the hammock, the damn bloody hammock. Right, eh? See you in the next one. Remember, keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.